Morning all. I'd like to show you a very interesting encounter between Capablanca and a player called Matteson. Hermanis Kalovich Matteson uh, was a very strong player, born in Riga. He won the first Latvian championship in 1924 and later in the same year the first World Amateur Championship organised in connection with the Olympic Games. So the first like chess Olympiad was an, was an individual's Olympiad and he did really well to win that. Uh, even ahead of um, Edgar Cole and Max Erver. He excelled at end game play and at the Prague Olympiads in 1931 he defeated both Alexander Alkain and Akiba Rubinstein in the ending believe it or not. He also composed over 60 excellent studies and is probably uh, for this that he's best remembered for. So let's see his game against Capablanca where Unfortunately for Madison, he had previous in a previous round lost to Nimzovic in a bad way in the Nimzo Indian. Uh, so there may have been some symptoms of that in this game, which I want to go over with you. So D4 from Capablanca, who's very much in the classical style of chess, none of this hypermodern, trendy stuff. So we see knight f6, which is the start of a hypermodern opening, really, because at that time d5 was very, very popular, just classically occupying the center. But uh, with Nimzovic in the tournament, he's having a strange effect on players and they're trying out perhaps his Nimzo Indian system now. So e6. So trying to get that Nimzo Indian pin and volunteering the bishop potentially. So knight c3 from Capablanca, bishop b4. Unfortunately, when looking at this game, it's quite amazing that Capablanca, in a way, is playing Queen C2. This is actually one of Kasparov's favourite moves against the Nimzo engine. And it's, it's a very, very logical move, of course. It's avoiding structural damage in one respect. If black is going to give up the bishop, why, why give black anything in return? Why, why give black the double pawns? And a slight downside of this move might be, you think, neglecting D4. So black plays quite a logical move, c5, it's one of the top moves played today. But again, Capablanca reacts really in a modern way. He just plays d takes c5. Capturing away from the center is sometimes um, perceived as as one of the sort of rules of thumb, you don't do that. But here it's, it's very justified because uh, this central file can create a lot of pressure. That d6 square is a bit more vulnerable than usual when there's a bishop f4. So here black plays knight c6, knight f3, and black has to take a little bit of time to get that pawn back. He plays bishop takes c5, and that bishop f4 eyeing that d6 square. So it looks as though, you know, the d, d takes c5, even though it's um, taking a pawn away from the center, there's a lot of dynamic pressure here. And potentially a bit of a bind on d5. Black tries to break out of the bind now by playing the move d5, uh, usually black just castles, so d5 was played here. Now Capablanca plays e3. And here we see casting again, today is the most popular move, we see a much rarer move. See theory wasn't that well developed anyway, so this move queen a5 might not be that great here. Let's put on a kibitzer at this point. Capablanca reacts very calmly here. Uh, Queen a5 looks as though the intention is to try and double white's pawns. But in this circumstance, now after bishop e2, we do see bishop b4, and perhaps black shouldn't go for this. He should just try and do something else. Uh, maybe just getting a symmetrical pawn structure is a good way to go if black wants to draw with black. For example, taking and then we've, we've guaranteed that symmetrical pawn structure which increases uh, drawing chances quite dramatically usually. Here, okay, even though white's slightly better, it shouldn't be the end of the world. But this, this is a problem bishop on c8. So it, there is a small advantage for white. But what we see in the game is perhaps a bit of a hang up for wanting to double the opponent's pawns. And perhaps inappropriately, we see the move bishop b4. But how is a player like um, Capablanca going to deal with this? Will he accept double pawns here? Well, with the bishop here, it's actually very tricky to do anything about it. Um, if rook c1, uh, I think that actually falls victim to potentially uh, a queen 
queen takes a2 but um queen queen takes a2 may be safely ignored here with white castling uh perhaps there's other moves though for black which um which are okay rook c1 is is a quite a good move in the circumstances actually just if if the intention is to offer the a2 pawn but Campbell just simply castles here which is a very strong move as well he doesn't mind having double pawns he's getting that important dark square bishop but how important exactly is this dark square bishop in this position Matheson does take as I say perhaps under the influence of an earlier round he placed the great played the great Nimzovich and it was a classic double pawns restraints game uh, when Nimzovich didn't give him any counterplay at all he might have been so impressed that he wanted to sort of simulate the same sort of thing so B takes C3 from Capablanca we do have an isolated pawn we do have double pawns but black uh, is faced now with these, these this bishop pair here let's see black castles rook a b1 there's also pressure down that b file when there's weak pawns there's often good pieces so what is white actually threatening well for the moment you know the bishop's more inhibited with the rook staring at b7 we see actually here the move queen a3 which looks a bit curious the queen has got this diagonal uh, potentially to go back on it's putting pressure on c3 it seems to be uh, quite useful and annoying if the Queen's like kicks then maybe it can just go to a4 or it can just go back to e7 but it, it wasn't kicked so rook fd1 and now we see b6 Campablanca undoubles his pawns c takes d so he's only got these like isolated pawns as an issue he's still got this dangerous bishop pair knight takes d5 looks as though the queen's being justified here putting pressure on c3 what is Campablanca's idea well a weakness of the last move here is that the knights now come off h7 and although it looks pretty crude it's pretty effective sometimes to just do this knight g5 just threatening mate rather cheekily mate in one how does black react well not very well actually black should have played perhaps g6 is kind of a lesser evil move and play could continue for example knight e4 to defend c3 here where white's got some dangerous pressure like bishop d6 is now threatened winning the exchange in this scenario knight takes e takes i know double pawns again but again you know white would have dynamic uh, compensation here for example this position is quite favored from an engine perspective weak pawns but uh, good pieces and also if you look at black's king safety there are certain big threats in this position coming up like knight f6 and perhaps using that diagonal so there's a lot of dynamic compensation here for the structure so anyway in this position it wasn't g6 that was played it was actually f5 and now Capablanca just plays actually bishop f3 kind of trying to make use of these loose pieces here on this diagonal so what is white actually threatening well actually an immediate tactical threat is rook takes d5 because if takes then check and then we're winning c6 this loose piece is a problem here Madison plays queen c5 kind of safeguarding against rook takes d5 but now we see c4 and what does actually c4 threaten because this pawn's pinned it's actually threatening rook b5 and then taking the knight so the rook b5 is a serious threat which has to be parried black plays knight db4 attacking capablanca's queen but look at these two bishops here now left on this these two diagonals very complementary very powerful queen b3 although not immediately forcing it is actually threatening bishop d6 now again that horrible idea of winning the exchange black tries to blunt that bishop with e5 and now instead of retreating this bishop Kemper blank plays a much stronger move he just plays a3 blacks in real big trouble here 
if he takes the bishop, then a takes b4, and if the queen moves now, we're losing c6. Black is losing c6. And even, you know, even white can even play this and and still be winning, apparently, because it's it's just so bad the position. If bishop b7, check. It's it's actually a very very bad position like this as well tactically, uh, but uh, the obvious thing is just to take the the bishop here. So we see knight a6, and now, what do you think Capablanca plays here? Do you think he retreats the bishop? If I give you ten seconds, it's the final move of the game. White to play. What would you play in this position? Starting from now. Okay, the knight on g5 is actually quite useful for this diagonal. Capablanca just plays bishop takes c6. So he's attacking the rook. So that kind of rules out e takes f or we could just win the rook. And the other problem is if queen takes c6, then c5 is, is very strong. If king h8 here, then knight f7. And it's actually forcing mate here. If rook takes, we have rook d8 with a back row mate to follow after queen e8. And of course if king g8 then we have the classic smothered mate after check, double check, queen g8 check, where it takes knight f7. You might think well knight e6, that's pretty hopeless to give up a piece with, with um, sorry, with bishop e6, pretty hopeless. Just knight takes e6. And again we're threatening this discovered check to win material. So, or even worse now actually, either knight d4 or knight d8 to win the queen with check. So this is a total disaster it seems after bishop takes c6 so much so that Matteson felt compelled to resign. So I wouldn't say Matteson is necessarily a weak player but in this game it seemed to be a bit too overly enthusiastic for doubling white's pawns. Perhaps it's early days this tournament for the Nimzo Indian defense and Nimzovich is in it. So perhaps who could resist the temptation of trying out this novel new hypermodern opening system and strategy. But against the great classical player like Capablanca, I mean you've got to uh, be very careful. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.